so we extract the DNA, we sequence everything, and usually what we get out is millions, a few million uh, short reads of 150 to 250 nucleotides in length. And then when we do, when I do taxonomic profiling, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reconstruct what was originally in the sample. So I want to see which organisms were there and how much of it. So then what I get out is essentially a text file that tells me which organisms are in the sample and then uh, what fraction of the DNA belongs to each of them. Earlier this year, I gave a talk about this tool in the, at the Dutch metagenomics community, essentially, and I asked them which tools they use to do this job, to do taxonomic profiling. And so, as you can see, there is a lot of them, but why did I feel the need to make another one? Well, when we do, so metagenomics has been around for 20 years almost at this point, and we have developed a lot of best practices such as assembly, so we don't just work with the short reads, we assemble them into longer sequences called contexts, we bin them and group the sequences together into metagenomic assembled genomes or MAGs, and yet none of this information is included in the profiling step usually. And so this has bothered me, and this is why I decided to make RAT. So, but why would I insist on integrating all of this information? Well, the idea is that again, uh, these reads are 150 to 250 nucleotides long. So that's typically even less than the length of a gene. And so there's very little information contained in these reads. And then when we assemble them into context, we have sequences of many thousand uh, nucleotides uh, length. We have many, we have hopefully multiple genes in them. And so we have more information with which to annotate the, um, the sequences. And then if we group them into metagenome assembled genomes or MAGs, then we have even more. So we have multiple contexts usually that contain hopefully much of an actual genome. And then, um, so this is why I would like to include this information actually in the profiling step. And uh, the idea behind this is the following. So if we, would, if we were to make a taxonomic profile based on just the mags, because this is very reliable, so we get really good annotations because we have a lot of information, then it would look like this. We would find, like with all of the taxa that we find in a certain sample, we would be very confident that they're actually there. But the problem is that if we only use the mags, then we ignore about half of our data. And then in unexplored environments, that can be actually up to 80 or 90% of our data. So we will not find many of the taxa that are actually supposed to be there. Now, if we do this with contigs, then we include more of our data because contigs represent a larger fraction of the reads that are in the sample. And we'll find some more organisms, but we'll still be ignoring up to 20, 30% of our uh, reads on average. Now, if we build a taxonomic profile based on the reads, then we are basing it on all of our data, on all of the reads. However, we will find a lot of noise. We will find a lot of organisms that are not actually supposed to be there, like in this uh, news article where people claim to have found plague bacteria on the subway in New York City. And um, so if we integrate the data, so if we, um, yeah, if we integrate all of it together, then I expect that we would reduce noise in the data because if we associate a read that is that would by itself be associated with a wrong taxa with a longer sequence, then it would hopefully get the correct annotation instead. And sometimes if we have reads that are not annotated and we associate them to a longer sequence, then they will have, then they will get the annotation. And now what does Red itself do? How does it build the taxonomic profile? Well, it prioritizes the annotation of each read by reliability. So we map the reads, I map the reads back to all of the, uh, to the assembly and the mags. And then if a read is associated with a metagenome assembled genome, then it automatically inherits the annotation of the mag. And if a read is, if a read is associated with a contig that is not in a mag, then it will inherit the annotation of the contig. And only if the reads are not mapped, then we will annotate them directly. So how well does this work? Well, for this, there, is a, uh, there are some simulated data sets available made by the people from the Kami Challenge. So there, they take genomes from the databases uh, that are known to be present in certain environments, and then they simulate a metagenome from this environment. And so then we have a metagenome where we know what we are actually supposed to find in the data. So we know which organisms are supposed to be there and how much of them are supposed to be there. 
And so um, we, uh, or I tested what, how integrating the information would affect uh, the, the read by read annotation. So whether a read gets the correct annotation. And what I found is this. So when you look at the green little pie, so when you look at the graph here, you see the mean true positive rate for, um, for these are about 10 samples. Um, so this is how many of the reads that had an annotation actually got the correct annotation. And then in the white parts of the little pie charts are the fraction of reads that are, that don't have an annotation. So when you look at the green pies here on always on the leftmost, uh, part, uh, leftmost side of the, of each rank, then what you see is that, um, on phylum level or on phylum rank, we're still okay. But then when you look at genus or species level, uh, a lot of the annotations are wrong. And that's if the reads even get an annotation. And then if you integrate even just um, context into these annotations, then you can actually annotate a larger fraction of the data and then correctly. And then here in yellow and orange, you have uh, all the information integrated, so max context and reads. I just bind them two different ways. This is not important for right now. And then you can annotate an even larger fraction of the data and more correctly. And then what we also see is that if we ignore the reads and just uh, annotate based on mags and context, then we will usually annotate a smaller fraction of the data. However, it will have a very high true positive rate. Now this was on a read by read basis. And now this graph is about comparing the taxonomic profiles that come out of these read annotations. So that these the, that are based on these read annotations. And here, this is the L1 distance. And an L1 distance is a measure of dissimilarity between two, uh, between two profiles. In this case, the correct profile, because we know what's supposed to be in each sample, and then the reconstructed profiles. And so we want a low dissimilarity. And what you can see here is that, um, oops, that red is amongst, uh, the red profiles are amongst the shortest distances, but uh, Kaiju does better in this case on genus and species rank. And then when we look at what taxa are we supposed to find, then we get this. So precision in this case means all of the taxa that are found by each tool, are they also supposed to be there? So what fraction of the taxa that the tool has identified is actually supposed to be in the profile? And then um, what, and then sensitivity is what fraction of the taxa that were supposed to be in the sample have been found by the tool. And he, there you can see that red does really well. So usually we have a trade-off where if your tool is really, really sensitive, then it will also find a lot of taxa that are not supposed to be there. We see that with Kaiju here. However, um, red actually does really well on both. So we have a very happy little red. So in conclusion, um, red integrates uh, taxonomic signals from mags, contigs, and reads to make one integrated taxonomic profile and thereby connects the taxonomic profiling step to the assembly and to binning steps. And then the profiles, the taxonomic profiles that are made by RED have good precision and good sensitivity. And uh, if you wanna know more, I also have a poster that I'll be presenting today. And um, if you come see me, I'll explain everything to you about how RED works exactly. And then you might also find out why I think that there is a rat in the Kami data set. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thanks for letting me give a talk here. Special thanks to the Fame Lab for hosting me for the last three months. You guys are fantastic. I really enjoyed my time here. And there's my contact information. Um,